So now we come to power plants, capacity factor, and actual generation. We know that power plants can never operate at full power all the time. There are various reasons for this, and they include maintenance, safety inspections, refueling, and intermittency. Uh, the maintenance and safety inspections are you know, applicable to all power plants, and uh, the intermittency is especially uh, applicable to those renewable power plants that run on sunlight and or wind. So we account for this um, real world fact by uh, looking at this term called capacity factor. Capacity factor is the percent of electricity actually generated based on what would have been generated if the power plant operated at maximum power. And so basically it's a percentage. So for instance, if you take a test, you could get 100% on it, but if you don't, you could get a percentage of 100%. So we have an example down here with Byron Generating Station. Under perfect conditions for a year, Byron Generating Station would have generated 20,148,000 megawatt hours with no stoppages under perfect conditions, running at full capacity all the time. Since that's impossible, we have to account for that by uh, using the capacity factor for nuclear power plants, and that's 86.1%. So 86.1% is what we uh, use, and we multiply that by its, its ideal perfect generation. So we have 20,148,000 megawatt hours under perfect conditions, and we multiply that number by 86.1%. And the way that looks on the equation is 0 0.861. If we multiply these together, we are actually taking 86.1% of 20,148,000, and we get 17,347,428 megawatt hours. So it's significantly less than what we would get if we had perfect generation from the Byron Generating Station. All power plants do this. And here we've got then the capacity factors for utility scale generators in the United States. And this is the latest information. Every year, the Energy Information uh, Administration recalculates and reexamines the capacity factors. So this is the latest list. And next year, a, no a new list will come out. And these numbers will fluctuate a little bit. But notice in the right hand column, we have then capacity factor, and it's a percentage. So we have then the very first uh, row is for coal-fired power plants, and they have a capacity factor of 56.7%. So you take their perfect generation, and you multiply it by 0 0.567, and you get their expected actual generation. And the same goes for natural gas combined cycle plants, nuclear power plants, hydropower plants, etc. Notice that some capacity factors are quite a bit more than others. So we have, for instance, nuclear power being 86.1%, but then we have solar vo photovoltaics being 20.3%. Uh, imagine that then. You have a power plant that's, say, running on solar photovoltaics, and you calculate its perfect generation, and then you only take 20.3% of that as its expected real-world generation. And that means then that uh, there is considerably less than what uh, than uh, what most people would otherwise think. Um, this is in part due to you know the physical constraints of Mother Nature and also the physical constraints of the physical materials that are being um, integrated into uh, the photovoltaic cells, and that is applicable to all of these different kinds of power plants. Wind has its own unique capacity factor because of natural and also material variables. Solar thermal also. Natural and uh, material uh, issues go into its capacity factor. So all of them are different and we need to make sure that when we're considering the amount of generation from any particular kind of power plant that we consider not only its capacity, not only time, but also, very importantly, the capacity factor, the percentage of power that's actually produced compared to what would have been produced under perfect circumstances.